This video contains information on how to set up your Alex account for this Math 1B pre-calculus course. Alex stands for Assessment and Learning in Knowledge Spaces and is an online adaptive learning program that uses artificial intelligence to precisely identify and deliver personalized instruction on the exact topics each student is most ready to learn. To begin the Alex program, open up a web browser on a computer connected to the internet and go to this URL up here, www.alex.com. And then click on this link here on the upper left that says Sign Up Now. And since you will be using Alex with a class, we'll be focusing on this left-hand box here. Now your professor should have provided you with a course code, which you'll enter in here. and then click Continue. Now you're asked to confirm your enrollment information. Yes, I'm in Math 1B Pre-Calculus with Professor Anteater at UCI. And then click Continue. Now you're asked for your 20-digit access code, which you can either purchase from the bookstore or Alex directly by clicking on this link here that says Purchase an Access Code Online. So let's enter in our access code and click Continue. Now enter in your student information here. Peter, Anteater, and now enter in your email, panteater at uci.edu and enter in a password that's six letters or digits minimum. Confirm that password. And then enter in your student ID. And then scroll down and read the Alex user agreement. Once you've read it, click on this box here that you have read and that you agree to the terms of the Alex user agreement, and then click Continue. And now it will give you your login, which you will use with the password you entered in the last step every time you log into Alex. Now click Continue. And Alex will look for a plugin on your computer and install it if needed. Here we didn't need to install it, but if the plugin is installed, you may need to restart your browser and then log back in with your login and password. Now you will learn some of the basic Alex answer input tools, known collectively as the answer editor. So using your keyboard, type in the number 14. And now it's asking you to hit this clear button which notice cleared that number 14. And now it's asking you to click on undo, which notice undid the last action of clearing that number 14. All right, so let's click on next to look at the next exercise. Let's learn how to enter in a fraction. So let's click this fraction button here. And now in the numerator, we'll type in two. And then we'll click in the denominator and type in 3. And we've entered in the fraction 2 thirds. So let's click on next to go to the next exercise. Now let's learn how to enter an expression with parentheses. So let's click here. And with our keyboard, we'll enter in a left parenthesis, x plus 4, right parenthesis. And then click on the exponent button and type in 2. And then click over here in this blue circle to get out of the exponent. And then using the keyboard, type in plus 7. 
Click on this blue circle and hold until you get to this blue circle. Release. Now click this fraction button, which put everything that we had highlighted in the numerator of this fraction. And now type in 3 into the denominator. And we've entered in this expression. So let's click on Next to go to the next exercise. Now let's learn how to plot a point and draw a line. Let's click on the pencil button, come over here, and plot this point. Then click on the ruler button. Move your mouse into this blue circle. Click here. Now move your mouse into this blue circle. Click here. And now grab the pencil icon again and move your mouse over here. Draw to here, draw to here. And we've drawn a line. So let's click on Next. And now we'll look at the Alex calculator. But it should be pointed out that not every question in Alex has a calculator active. It is only active when Alex feels it is needed for a certain problem. If it is not active in Alex, do not use your own calculator. So let's click on OK. And then we'll come up here and click on the calculator. We'll click on this blue box. We'll type in the number 31, and then we'll click on the Addition button, and then we'll type here 9, and then click on the Equals button, and so on. So it functions just like a normal calculator. All right, so let's click on Next. Now at any time during assessment or learning, if you ever need help, there's this Help button up here on the top that you can click. And over here on the right, there is a link to an Alex user guide, which you can always read. And then over here on the left, we see this link, All Topics for Pre-Calculus. So let's click on that. And this will give you an extensive list of topics or tools that you might encounter in the Answer Editor. And when you're done reading what you were looking for, you can click on Done down here. And also, if there's a new tool and a question that you've never seen before, there is this Quick Help that you can click on to learn how to use that tool. Let's click on Next. Now that you are registered and have learned about the Answer Editor, you will be given what is called your initial assessment. This is basically the heart and soul of Alex, as it will determine your starting point or baseline for your learning, which is called your knowledge state. Now, during this initial assessment, you'll be asked between 25 to 35 questions, and the powerful assessment engine within Alex will be capable of pinpointing your knowledge state very precisely. That is, the system will know what you know, what you don't know, and what you are capable of learning next. And what you don't know and what someone else in the class doesn't know will be different, but that's okay. Alex will fill your learning gaps when you get into the learning mode after your initial assessment. Now, during this initial assessment, you should have a pencil and paper handy. Don't be anxious or nervous, just do your best. Okay, so let's get started. So for Peter's first question, he's asked to graph this line here. Well, when x is equal to 0, for example, this equation simplifies to negative 3y is equal to negative 12, or y is equal to 4, which means the point 0, 4 lies on the line. So let's grab the pencil, go to x equals 0, y equal 4, and plot a point. And then coming back up here, when y is equal to 0, for example, this equation simplifies to 4x is equal to negative 12, which means x is equal to negative 3. So the point negative 3, 0 also lies on the line. So we could take our pencil again and go to x equal negative 3, y equals 0, and plot a point. But let's look at this other feature over here. 
This actually allows you to enter in the ordered pair, negative 3, 0. Click on plot point, and Alex will plot it for you. Now grab your ruler, click on one point, click on the other, grab your pencil again, and draw your line. And then we need to click on next to submit our answer, but let's scroll down a little bit. There it is. Let's click it. And notice that Alex didn't tell Peter whether he was right or wrong. And you will not be told if you are right or wrong on the assessment until you get a report at the end. All right, and for his second question, he's asked to multiply these two binomials so he can FOIL. It's 2a times 8a is 16a squared. And then the outer and inner terms combine to give us minus 50ab. And the last term is plus 25b squared. Click on Next to submit the answer. Now notice this other button over here that says, I don't know. Let's say that Peter doesn't know how to work with rational exponents very well. Then he can click on this button, I don't know. Now, if at any time during your initial assessment, if you honestly do not know an answer to a question or have never learned that topic before, then you can click on this button, I don't know. But whatever you do, do not just click it because you want to get through the assessment quicker. This will make for many more hours of unnecessary work throughout the quarter. Just do your best and try to answer the questions that you think you have a good shot at answering correctly. So let's click on I don't know here. And now Peter, for his fourth question, is asked to convert 150 degrees to radian measure in terms of pi, which he can determine by multiplying 150 by pi divided by 180 degrees which would give him 5 times pi all divided by 6. And then he would click on Next to submit his answer. Now for demonstration purposes, let's just skip to the end of his assessment. All right, and so this is at the end of the assessment. His last question, Alex is asking him to find both B intersect C and B union C, where B and C are defined here. B is a set of all Z such that Z is greater than 4, and C is a set of all Z such that Z is less than or equal to 7. And the intersection is the set of all numbers that's common to both of those two sets, which would be the interval from 4 to 7. So we'll click on this icon. Notice we're not including 4, but we are including 7. And B union C is a set of all real numbers. So negative infinity up to infinity. And then click Next to submit the answer. All right, so Peter has completed his initial assessment. Let's click on Next to see what Alex learned about Peter Anteater. Now this is what is called Peter Anteater's Alex Pie. In Alex, a student's knowledge is represented by these multicolored pie charts. And this pie chart here is divided into five slices. Up here, the green slice corresponds to topics in trigonometry. This pink slice corresponds to topics in exponential and logarithmic functions. This purple slice corresponds to topics on polynomials and rational functions. The yellow slice corresponds to topics on functions and graphs. And this blue slice here corresponds to topics in Algebra and Geometry Review. And the 166 out of 266 topics that Alex determined Peter knows are split up into these five slices. So let's click on Continue. Now the dark part of each slice corresponds to the topics Peter knows, and the light part corresponds to the topics that Peter will learn. His goal is to fill his pie, that is to make each slice dark. So this is a powerful motivator because he wants to fill the entire pie by making each slice dark. All right, let's click on Continue. 
Now, Peter's goal here is to learn all the topics in this course. And the Alex Pi is very user-friendly when it comes to navigating through the topics within each slice. So let's say that Peter wants to work over here in Algebra and Geometry Review. He simply hovers over that slice, and Alex gives him access to all the topics he is ready to learn. So let's say that Peter wants to work on this topic down here, factoring a sum or difference of two cubes. He would click here. So Alex is asking Peter to factor this expression here, 8w cubed plus 125. And let's say that Peter doesn't quite remember the formula for the sum of two cubes. He can click here on Explain. And Alex has a detailed explanation on the formulas that would be used, and then how to solve the problem. There's also additional resources over here that he might find useful. And also, up here, let's say Peter wanted to refresh his memory on what factor means. He can click here. And Alex brings him to a detailed explanation of what it means to factor. And once he's done, he can close the window, which brings him back to the problem. And let's say now he's ready to work on this problem. So he would click on Practice. And Alex gives him a different instance of the same type of problem. So now applying what he just learned, he types in his answer of x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And clicks on next to submit his answer. And Alex tells him right away that he's correct. And it also tells him that if he answers the question with that help two more times, that Alex will add this topic to his pie. So let's click Practice. And this one factors into 5 minus 3x times 25 plus 15x plus 9x squared. And then he clicks on Next. And again, Alex tells him that he is correct, and then he needs to practice it one more time. And he gets his answer of 3u plus 4 times 9u squared minus 12u plus 16. And then he clicks on Next to submit his answer. Now Alex confirms that he seemed to have learned this question, and now he has a few choices. He can either press on Done or on More Practice. But let's press on Done. And notice that the total number of topics jumped from 166 to 167, because Alex just added that topic to his pie. Now you might be wondering what these dotted white lines are here in the pie. These signify or encompass the topics that are in the current intermediate objective. In this Math 1B class, there are two intermediate objectives. And basically what that means is that the course content is split into two sections. The first part of the course, which corresponds to topics that will be on your midterm, and then the second part of the course. And both of the objectives together correspond to topics that you will see on your final. And notice down here that Alex does tell you how many topics are left for you to master before the due date of that objective. So let's go back to the pie and choose a different topic to work on. So maybe Peter wants to work over here in functions and graphs. Again, he hovers over that slice and Alex gives him access to the topics he is ready to learn. So let's say he decides to work on this graphing a piecewise defined function. Now let's say Peter never learned about piecewise functions, so he can click on the explanation. And there's this detailed explanation about piecewise functions. Again, links to the dictionary, additional resources over here. And let's just say Peter still doesn't quite understand and he doesn't feel like working on this problem anymore. 
who just really wants to choose a different topic. At any time, you can go up here and click on My Pie and choose a different topic. Maybe he wants to work on polynomials and rational functions. Or maybe he wants to go back and work on algebra and geometry review. That's okay. He can change his mind and work on any topic that Alex tells him he's ready to learn. Now, it should be pointed out that Alex will periodically reassess you to confirm your retention of the topics you have studied. These are called automatic or progress assessments and are given based on your rate of progress in Alex and the amount of time spent working in Alex. It should be pointed out that although you demonstrate mastery of a certain topic in your learning, Alex may expect you to demonstrate continued mastery of that topic in subsequent assessments, and if you seem to need review, Alex will subtract that topic and possibly other prerequisite topics from your pie, making them available again for selection and learning. Therefore, always try to do your best on assessments. All right, there are a few more things that should be pointed out here. If you look up here, there is this link called Report. If you click here, it gives you a full report on your knowledge. It shows your pie, what you can do, what you're ready to learn next, as well as your history. It gives the assessment performance the percent of the current objective you have satisfied currently. And if you go back up here, there's also a tab that says Time and Topic. If you click here, Alex tells you the time that has been spent in Alex, the topics attempted, the topics mastered, and so on. Also up here, there's a link to the calendar. And this will give you all the links to your midterms, tell you when the objectives are due, when your final is, when the last objective is due, and so on. And also up here, there's a link to an inbox. And at any time, if you have questions, you can compose an email. And if you click on this To button, there's an option to send an email to Alex Customer Support and your professor. And Alex has a lot of other cool features that you can familiarize yourself with once you start browsing around the website. And for all other information on this Math 1B course, please see the course website as it has full details on all other aspects of the course. Have fun learning!